All right, hello and welcome. All right, we're going to start talking a little bit more about where data, where the data, where our data is coming from. Um, you know, at this point, we have a rough idea of how to explore some data that we have, how to do some uh, visualizations to get a feel for what's going on. Um, but we're going to take a step back now and think a little bit more about the uh, sort of the whole the whole study design process kind of um, from from the start. And that's really about getting your data. So we're going to take a look at um, population sampling, right? The, um, you know, the, the big picture here is that we are interested in describing or making some inferences or estimates um, about a variable of interest of a specific population. Um, so when we're thinking about using data to make statements about a population, um, whether it's something like, you know, what is the mean body mass index? What is you know, an average of this variable, what is the variance of this variable, and estimate things like that. It's important to have a concrete definition of the population of interest. All right, and this is what we refer to as the target population. Target population. Target population. So when you are thinking about, um, you know, uh, trying to uh, come up with a research question or something that you're, you're, you're interested in researching, it's really important here that you can be as specific as possible. Be specific. Be specific. So we want to think about the who, which is sort of the obvious thing, but really you want to be specific, right? So if someone were to say, you know, for example, um, if someone says, you know, uh, target population, maybe we're interested in, you know, some sort of uh, mean blood pressure measurement. And you say, well, who are you interested? You know, what do you think? Well, I'm concerned with maybe, uh, say, um, uh, females, um, American, you know, in America, females, right? Um, so you might say American females. Okay. That's pretty vague, actually. We want to be a lot more specific than that, right? Um, probably not just all American females, right? But, um, you know, what, what, what age, right? Um, where, you know, in all of America or a specific region, um, if you're talking about all of America, you know, maybe we're going to say what age. So maybe we would say, you know, American females that are older, right? They might say older American females. Well, then, then that begs the question, what is older? Is it 60 plus? Is it 70 plus? Or is it 40 plus, um, years old, right? What is, what does older mean? So you want this to be as specific as possible, as specific as possible here that you can do. Okay. Uh, who, what time frame? who, and, and sort of like, kind of like a win, but what time frame are we talking about? Um, what time frame are we talking about? Are we talking about, you know, older American females, um, in the year, you know, are we talking about currently? Are we talking about over the last decade, over the last century? You know, what? Um, you know, interest, you know, as of, you know, are we talking 2020? Are we talking, you know, um, 2000s? Are we talking, you know, April uh, 2020, right? Um, uh, you know, what, what do we, what do we win, right? What are we talking about here? Okay. Um, and then where, where, right? The geographic location, right? So females, are we talking about everyone in, in America? You know, what's our target population? Are we interested in, um, what's going on in the Midwest? Are we interested in maybe just the state of Minnesota? Are we interested in, maybe Duluth, the city of Duluth, Minnesota, or St. Louis County, right? Do I really care about what's happening in Wisconsin? You know, is that part of my target population? You want to be as specific as possible. As specific as possible, right? So you could maybe say something like, you know, um, we are interested in We'll say mean systolic blood pressure, mean systolic blood pressure. I'm just picking a variable of interest here for now of something that we've seen before, but this is the variable of interest really isn't what I'm concerned about with the target population, but interested in mean systolic blood uh, pressure. Oops. 
mean systolic blood pressure for females in St. Louis County, St. Louis County, St. Louis County. Interested in mean systolic blood pressure for females in St. Louis County um, who are ages 60 plus during summer 2020 for all ethnicities. That's a pretty well-defined target population. Females from St. Louis County, uh, St. Louis County, that's where uh, Duluth is in Minnesota, St. Louis County, 60 years plus. Um, we're looking at recent stuff from current, you know, relatively current, summer 2020, ideally, if we can, um, for all ethnicities, right? So um, again, possible uh, more specificity if, if you're talking, you know, maybe um, uh, I'm specifically interested in, in African-American females or, you know, Caucasian or, or whatever, right? But you know, for all, all ethnicities, right? You can, can put that in there too, okay? Um, that's, a, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good target population definition, right? So much better, so much better than older females from the Midwest, right? Right? Not a fan of that. Not 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 a good target population, right? If you're going to define a target population, be as specific as possible, okay? As specific as possible, right? So the final takeaway then that I would leave us here with this in an asterisk would be that the target population should be clearly defined so that everyone can understand. The target population should be clearly defined in a manner in a manner that everyone can understand everyone can understand um this is important for a couple of reasons right everyone can understand one you know if you're working on a team, it's not uncommon for a, a team who's designing a study, you know, a research team, you might have a statistician involved there or or someone who's kind of serving in that role. You might have, um, you know, maybe someone who's an expert in the discipline of a variable of interest. Maybe it's a social sciences um, thing or a medical uh, variable of interest, you know, like body mass index or blood pressure. So maybe you've got someone from the medical field there and, you know, some other um, uh, people on your team. It's, you know, target population, write it down. Really helps to write it down in words, in a sentence, a concrete paragraph. Staple it on the wall so everyone knows what the target population is. You know, or, um, I don't know, you use staples, what do you, thumbtacks or something like that, right? Put it up on the wall, tape it on the wall, right? Um, write it down. We want everyone to understand your target population, right? So that there's no ambiguity as far as what your goals are. The uh, a second reason, um, and kind of sort of more practical reason why the target population is so important to be defining is because when it comes to sampling, understanding what you're trying to sample from, what the quote unquote population is that you're pulling a sample from is important. Okay. So um, let's talk about then, given that we have a well-defined target population, now what, right? Well, now we're going to talk about how we can go to the next step about making inferential statements inferential statements. And this is a little bit of a kind of a primer for, for the module two in this course, making inferential statements about our target population, right? Maybe we're interested in knowing mean systolic blood pressure, right? So um, at this stage is where you're going to start to need some data. We're going to start to need some data here, okay? There's a few ways to go about getting some data. The first way, the most complete way to do it is to just do a census. A census is where you measure the whole target population. This is, again, why it's important to have a clear, well-defined target population. How are you supposed to take a census of your target population if you don't know what it is, right? So measure the whole 
target population. Whole target population. Okay. Uh, census. All right. You're doing everyone in the target population. This is not really taking a smaller sample, but it's just, it's trying to attempt to measure everyone, right? Uh, so obviously this is easier when your target population is a lot smaller, easier for small populations, easier for small populations, right? So maybe I'm, uh, my target population is limited to something, for example, on campus at UMD, like, you know, uh, interested in something about fret, you know, um, uh, freshmen who are science and engineering majors, um, at UMD in 2021. Um, there's maybe only a few, there's, you know, maybe hundreds rather than thousands or hundreds of thousands. So maybe I can just try to do a census and, uh, reach out to all of the, uh, freshmen, um, that are, um, part of that target population easier for small populations. Um, difficult and extremely expensive for larger populations, for larger, larger populations, right? The, the, the dollar sign, the, the, the meta notes in me makes me, I have to use green since I have it, right? Expensive for larger populations, expensive for larger populations, right? Um, the United States does a, um, census, um, Oh, what's it called? Bicentennial? Is that the right word? Every 20 years, I think. Um, every every 20 years, so bicentennial every two every 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 other 10 years um is when the United States attempts to do a census, right? Only once every 20 years. Um, you know, not very often. They don't do it every year. We don't we don't try to do it every year, okay? So there's a census. All right. That's great. If you're doing a census, then then making statements on your um your target population, the the statistics portion of it's actually quite simple. If you want like mean blood pressure and you have your target population, you have a census for it, right? You just add up the total and divide by, you know, this total size of the population, right? Not a lot of, uh, um, variability there, right? So the second dealing with this idea that it's extremely expensive for larger populations. Um, you know, I would even say systolic blood pressure females in St. Louis County ages 60 plus during summer 2020. Um, you know, possible to do a census just in terms of feasibility, but just in terms of budget, maybe the budget's not there, right? To try to get the manpower to do that. So, um, how can you do this in a cheaper way? So we can, what we can do is we do a sampling, right? We take a sample from the population and we're going to focus on splitting this up into two different types of sampling. This first one we're going to talk about is probability sampling, probability sampling. Okay. So for probability sampling, there's a few things, um, that we want to note about probability sampling. Um, we get what's called a sampling frame. The sampling frame, the sampling frame is the list of all units in your target population list of all units in the population list of all units of population. So first we take our sampling frame. Now, when we have that list of all units in our population, we can determine the probability of selection for every unit on the list. Determine the probability of selection for every unit on the list. Okay. So then what we do, we have this sampling frame and we have the probability of selection for every unit on the list. We select units at random, select units at random, at random sampling rates for different subgroups determined by the probability of selection. Sampling rates for different, different subgroups determined by probability of selection, probability of selection. Okay. Probability sampling. All right. The, uh, 
key thing about probability sampling here, something that is, is really important, is that you know the probability, we know the probability of selection for every unit on the list. Um, and that's, that's pretty important. Okay, probability sampling. All right. Now, another type of sampling is non-probability sampling. Non-probability sampling. Let's try that again. Sampling. So non-probability sampling, right? Probabilities of selection cannot be determined for the population units. Probabilities of selection can not be determined for the population units. For the population, for the population units. Okay, um, because we cannot determine uh, the probability of selection, it's difficult. Difficult to make inference for the target populations. You have a high potential for bias. Difficult to make inference for for target for target populations. We have a high potential. High potential for sampling bias. High potential for bias. High potential for bias. We'll talk more in another video about non-probability sampling, but to get an idea of this and what 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 this bias could be is is um you know one type of sampling is convenience sampling where you go to um you know maybe a a campus sort of uh, common walkway right you go to some student center on campus and you just survey people that are walking by right we don't know the probability of selection there. And unless our target population is really about students walking by student centers on campus, you know, if you're making inferences about a larger population, your 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 sample information is going to be very biased towards whatever students think who are on campus, right? You're not getting a good representative sample at all. And we don't really have a way of adjusting for that because we don't know the probabilities of selection. More on non-probability sampling later, okay? Um, Probability sampling is is ideally the way to go when we actually want to make accurate inferences that are non-biased about our population. They allow us to do quite a few things. Probability samples yield probability samples yield representative realistic random samples representative realistic representative realistic random samples random samples because these are random samples and we know the probability of selection they have important statistical properties we could take advantage of have important important statistical properties important statistical properties that we get to take advantage of here and that's that's the big takeaway with probability samples so with probability samples what are some of these important statistical properties we get to use what is known as sampling distributions which is something you should be um have some brief familiarity with in, in the background um if you can look at the sampling distribution um the nice thing about sampling distributions from a probability sample is they're able to provide unbiased estimates of the parameter of interest, unbiased estimates, unbiased estimates. We're able to measure our uncertainty, quantify our uncertainty and our accuracy. Our uncertainty and our accuracy. We get to all we get that information from using the distribu a sampling distribution. Because we can use, the sampling distributions rely on the fact that um, uh, there's, well, they don't rely on the fact, but the, the nice thing about the ability to use a sampling distribution means we don't need to do a census to get 
an accurate piece of information, right? Sampling distributions, you don't need to repeat it. You only need to do one sample of your population. It doesn't even need to be that large of a sample. Um, you can make good population inferences for populations in the millions by doing a pretty well-structured sample of, you know, maybe just, you know, a couple thousand. Um, you know, you think about this, you know, the difference there you're talking about maybe very small percentage of the overall population being in your sample, um, but you can have very good uh, parameter estimates for that. And you only need to take the sample once, which is really great. There's no need for a census in this case. No need for a census, right? Um, if we're willing to have, you know, some acceptable amount of uncertainty in our estimates, we don't even need to do a census. Even if we could, we just, if we don't, we, you know, we're willing to have some error there, then, then not a big deal. No need for a census, okay? I want to point out though that um, it, it might be surprising to you to, to realize that this idea of sampling distributions um, is not that old, less than a hundred years old, um, I would say. It wasn't really until the 1930s. If you think about all the things that we were doing in the early 1900s, right? It wasn't really until the 1930s where I think most people, um, statisticians would agree the kind of the, the, the seminal paper that really um, brought out sampling distributions and put this um, on a well-defined concrete standing was a paper by uh, a gentleman named Jersey Neyman. So I want to put his name down here if you want to go ahead and Google, do a further search there. It wasn't until 1930s that Jersey Neyman um, really focused on this idea of sampling distributions, not needing to do a census and only needing to take one sample um, and allowing us to make inference and good unbiased inferences nonetheless. Pretty cool. All right, that's gonna do it for this introductory video. Um, again, more on probability samples and non-probability samples in future videos. We'll see you there.